day three at the 29th Surface Navy Association National Symposium. Today we take a further look at some of the latest naval defense technologies being showcased on the show floor, such as this electro-optic system by L3 Technologies. We have here is the Mark 20 Mod 1 system. This is the fourth generation of the EOSS. It, first generation being the Mark 46 Mod 0, uh, then that moved to the Mod 1, and most recently is the Mark 20 Mod 0, which is currently deployed on, on the DDG 51s. This generation system is slated for the DDG 51s Flight 3 and potentially retrofitted into uh, Flight 1 as well. This system here, as the next generation, is greatly reduced weight and increased performance as well. So you can see we're able to demonstrate this at the trade show this year. The system itself has really two key benefits over some of the others. The first is its pointing accuracy. So this is part of the Mark 34, Mark 48 gun weapon system. So it needs to have very good pointing accuracy when we identify a target and feed those coordinates to the gun for it to create a fire control solution and put rounds on target. The other piece is the Mark 20 um, product series itself, and this one being the, the smallest of the series, the latest generation, is shock hardened. So there's a standard, mill standard 901D, grade A shock means that it can survive uh, a ballistic hit and still operate through it. This is clearly a, a gun weapon EOSS, so it, it provides coordinates for a target engagement. For the show here, what we're showing is connecting it to a, a system that would be identified as sort of a battle space awareness multi-target detection system. So this provides sort of a, a, a radial set of cameras It's always staring out at the horizon, finds a target, uh, detects the target, and then would pass that information to the EOSS You'd slew the queue on the target, be able to do some positive identification and engagement. So it's, it's, it's uh, ancillary support to the EOSS providing battle space awareness and target detection. All right, Michael, what can you tell us about the F-110? So uh, the F-110 is a new ship uh, for the Spanish Navy. It's a Spanish uh, national ship design from uh, Navantia Systems uh, as the Spanish national shipbuilder. Uh, it's about a 5,800-ton uh, ship frigate. Um, it's designed to uh, replace the Oliver Hazard Perry class, the FFG-7 Santa Maria class that they have in Spain. Uh, it's a multi-row frigate, uh, primary ASW, um, with a limited AAW capability, and that's where Lockheed Martin's role on the, on the platform comes into play. This is actually a Spanish combat system on this ship. Uh, Scomba is Navantia's uh, national combat system. And so Lockheed Martin is going to provide the Aegis fire control loop to allow for the control of the radar and the standard missile, the US SM-2 missile, uh, on this platform. So we're going to interface with the Navantia combat system uh, via a, a, a product we have called IAFCL, the International Aegis Fire Control Loop. Um, so it'll be a Scomba combat system with the Lockheed Martin fire control loop. And then we have a collaboration with Indra, uh, who's their national radar company in Spain, um, to develop an S-band solid state AESA radar uh, for this F-10 F-110 frigate. Sand Shark is our uh, smallest and most portable autonomous underwater vehicle. Now, an autonomous underwater vehicle is a battery-powered, uh, untethered uh, robot that is used for many functions and many applications, including mapping the seafloor, as well as um, uh, every environmental sensing and really um, looking at various technologies to integrate new payloads into the vehicle. So, what we're offering today is a uh, is a, a small. Uh, Four, just over a four inch vehicle, which has a 200 meter depth rating and it has the endurance for about eight hours. And so, what we've done is designed this vehicle to be an open uh, payload architecture so that our users can now integrate new payloads in, into the vehicle that itself. Um, so, we provide the, the engine, if you will, and we want our, our users to, uh, to, to integrate a new payload. 
However, we do offer um, existing payloads such as a side scan sonar um, and video. We want people to develop the application, so certainly it's capable of integrating a camera for a potential ISR application or even mine countermeasures or, or um, uh, even environmental sensing, so looking at what, what's on the seafloor. Uh, this vehicle is well suited for, for integrating new payloads. Excalibur 1B is in full rate production for the U.S. Army and some of our partners around the world. And it's being used in combat uh, today as we speak. The Excalibur family of projectiles, previous variants, and the Excalibur 1B has now been fired in combat almost 1,100 times to great effect against our adversaries. Excalibur 1B is a 155 millimeter projectile. Um, we have integrated Excalibur 1B into many different howitzer guns. Uh, we also have experience integrating uh, Excalibur, a 5-inch version of Excalibur, uh, and testing it from a 5-inch gun. Um, what's unique about Excalibur is its ability to be used in a multitude of guns uh, and gun systems and combinations of propelling charges. Um, and we've been successful in integrating into different guns uh, all over the world. The key questions on integration include how do you initialize the projectile provided its mission data that it needs, how is it stored uh, in containers on the ship, and how is it handled, removed from the containers, handled, paired with a propelling charge and rammed into the gun. Uh, those are that's the essence of integrating uh, a projectile, a new projectile, into this system is how does it work in this fully automated gun system. We do have some concepts for integration. Again, not, not an easy task, but a very feasible task from an engineering perspective. And, and I can't share details with you at this point, uh, but we think it's the best candidate for integration because of its maturity. Um, it's in production. The projectile itself is ready to go now. So it's really a question of integration. Um, what needs to be done to make that happen and how much time is required? But the Navy wouldn't have to spend any money at all on developing a new projectile for the gun because it's done. The Army's made this investment. Uh, it's in full rate production. Excalibur already has a very robust anti-jamming capability, something I cannot discuss in detail. But this has been tested uh, in, a, in a robust threat environment. But the Army's investing to make it even more resilient to face these emerging, more advanced threats. So the Navy will benefit from those Army investments as well. If the Navy decides to do some testing, the key uh, data requirement that we'd be looking for is our muzzle exit velocity from the gun. And that will allow us to use our very mature simulation to determine what range will, can be achieved once a project a propelling charge is optimized um, and so we estimate that uh, the Navy would get about 30 nautical miles without any changes to uh, the projectile assuming a propelling charge would deliver a certain muzzle exit velocity that um, we're looking at and then further uh, modifications could be done in the future uh, if required, as, uh, such as adding a rocket motor uh, to extend the range if the Navy was interested in doing that. But without any modification uh, or perhaps very minor modifications, Excalibur would be ready to go for the Navy on their timeline. So one of the key things is the ship deployment schedule. Uh, and the Navy may uh, be willing to talk to you about that, but there's not a lot of time available uh, to ensure the DDG-1000 can deploy with projectiles it can fire. And that's another reason, uh, this tight schedule, another reason why Excalibur is a very good option for the Navy.